Well, good evening. Today we have a 2015 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD with the 66 Dirty Max. It was towed in here because it apparently quit while the customer was driving it. it said the Stabilitrack light came on, the engine stalled, and it wouldn't crank. Uh, I came back to it a day later and the battery was stone dead. So I got a battery charger on it now. Service to Billitrack message, I see. Low fuel light. And it makes no attempt to crank. So let's get a scanner hooked up to this thing and see if we can talk to any controllers. So we're going to try to connect to this thing. See if we can talk to anything on here. And it's a 2015. Let's see if it'll automatically ID. Okay, so the ECM is not communicating, so we'll have to manually ID it. So I'll get the VIN number. So I manually entered the VIN, and it still didn't decode it. So let's do a code scan and see if anything will communicate on the CAN bus. Well, we got communication with the transmission communication with the ABS module and it's complaining about a loss of communication with the engine control so is the transmission hmm loss of communication with the steering angle sensor body control module lost communication with electronic brake control module low voltage while the battery went dead lost communication with engine control low speed CAN bus off. Hmm, interesting. So let's go back. 16 controllers talked, but the ECM did not. So I don't think we have a network problem per se, unless it's confined to the ECM. No communication. So the first step is to check for uh, powers and grounds to the ECM, check the fuses that supply power to the ECM. So on another note, uh, the check engine light is not on either, so that would explain, or that would uh, be another indication the ECM is not awake. The fuel gauge problem on the dash, because the information comes from the ECM, probably that's why it's displaying low fuel. So we have an ECM 30 amp fuse, uh, uh, we've got several fuses here, so we're going to check all the fuses in the Underhood Fuse Center. So according to this cover, fuse 34 is an ECM fuse, and 54 I think it was. Fifty-one, this 30 amp fuse over here. Both of these are good. And 34 is this one here. Well, I'm going to go through and test all the fuses here for what it's going to take. And if they all test good, there's three legged fuses in this fuse panel. Any fuse that doesn't have power on both sides is likely not powered up, so not too concerned about that. Well, where's the ECM live? Down here, I believe. So I printed off the OE diagram. Fuse 34 is good. Fuse 57 is good. The engine control relay feeds power to fuse 30, and that's good. So the ECM is turning on this relay, but I don't see the ECM turning on the check engine light. So, this is fuse 57, it's one of these triple fuses. Oh, 
Okay, well, we're going to have to go to the ECM to X1, connector X1. This is the ECM here. And hopefully it's marked. Usually it's marked. You would think it's either this connector on the right side here or the one closest to the rad. I mean, one X1, but we'll double check. So I'm 99% sure that this middle connector is actually X1. Where's the logic GM? It's labeled J1 on the actual ECM, and this one's labeled J2. So this is pin one, and this one down here is pin 73. It's got the same layout as this connector here. And I gotta answer the phone. So we're gonna check pin 48, which is supposed to be run crank, ignition one voltage. So that should be 52, 51, 50, 49, 48. Should be that pin right there. One, two, three, four in from that row. So I'm going to use just a conventional test light, but then we're going to upgrade to a, a better test light. So we got power on that pin, which is with the key on. I'm going to use a, uh, I think that comes from a 15 amp fuse. Yeah, that comes from a 15 amp fuse, 48. So that should power up a, a headlight, no problem. So that circuit supplies power enough to run a headlight with no problem. So that one's good. So next we're going to qualify. Sixty-seven, I think it is. It's on the next page here. Pages are sticking together here. Sixty-seven battery positive voltage. So that should be a count in from the end. So that's pin sixty-seven. And you can see that one lights a headlight fine. So next we got to qualify. 73 but that one needs power from the K75 relay KR75 relay now there was power at this 30 amp fuse so if I bypass this relay and send power because I got the ECM disconnected it's not going to be able to ground the relay so on here that relay is called the KR75 engine control ignition relay and in here it's relay number 70 ECM relay which is this one right here sorry this one right here which is this relay right here so we're gonna jump 30 to 87 with a relay jumper that's these two the diagonal are the ones that are across from each other and that should send power to pin 73 and turn on my headlight I put a relay switch in there when I turn that switch on, it supplies power to pin 73 of the ECM X1. So that's that feed, that feed, and that feed. That's just all three feeds to the ECM qualified reasonably reliably. So next we got to qualify these five grounds. Four of them are on connector two, which is the connector, this one at this end, faces closest to the rad. So let's check those grounds. So there's pin 73 at X2, which is a ground using the power off the battery and it lights a headlight. So that ground should be reasonably uh, good. There's only a couple more grounds here, 17, 18, and 21, which are 17, 18, and 21. Okay, so we'll check those. Now those are referred to as sensor grounds, but they all go to this G122 here. So we're going to qualify those 17, 18, and 21. 
So there's 21 and it supplies enough ground to light a headlight and 17 and 18 are this one and the next one. So those three grounds are good. So there's only one more ground on connector 3 pin 73 which is obviously the one I haven't got unplugged. So there's pin 73 on connector X3. And as you can see, it supplies a ground good enough to run a three to four amp headlight. So we've qualified all the powers and all the grounds reasonably reliably, in my opinion. Why isn't this ECM awake? This relay turns on these fuses and I did have power at these fuses so that meant the ECM was supplying a ground to turn that relay on. Hmm. Very interesting. So I've got all three connectors plugged back in at the ECM. I've got the key on and if I remove this relay and reinstall it you can see that it is powering on and it supplies power to this 30 amp fuse and this 15 amp fuse. So the ECM is partially awake. wonder if it's a network problem. But why wouldn't the check engine light be on? I don't believe the check engine light is networked. I think it's hardwired, but I haven't looked at that portion of the schematic. So I was right, the check engine light is hardwired, even though it's an LED. Ignition power from the cluster through the light, it's ground side controlled. Now, I just noticed another ignition on this one, pin 26. I didn't check that, so let's check that. So pin 26 says it's accessory wake up serial data. That's not a power wire. Accessory wake up serial data, yet here it says ignition. But that's data communications. So let's have a look at the CAN bus wires. These probably 46 and 66 and 65 and 45 are CAN bus wires. But I think I'm going to call it a night, pick up in the morning, have some brain food. So we're back working on this uh, 2015 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. And I'm looking at the CAN bus activity. Uh, the yellow trace is CAN H and the green trace is CAN L. Using a breakout box at the DLC. And yes, I'm using pin number five here as a ground I should probably be going to the battery negative post but it looks like a pretty good perfect can signal um, I'm gonna measure the terminating resistance on it so I'm gonna see if it will go to sleep if I turn the key off as I really don't want to disconnect both batteries that clicking sound you hear is the relay the PCM relay cycling and it shouldn't do that so we still got a bias voltage on the two circuits but if it drops to zero I'll put an ohmmeter across 6 and 14 and see if it reads 60 to 62 ohms okay well let's give it a few minutes here so I ended up having to disconnect both batteries because the CAN bus bias voltage wouldn't go down so I didn't want it to affect the ohmmeter reading got the breakout box installed at the DLC got the scan tool disconnected batteries disconnected measuring resistance across 6 and 14 and we've got 61 ohms so the CAN bus is not shorted it's not open uh, I'm sure there's a terminating resistor in the ECM so I don't think it's a ECM problem I suppose we could check for CAN activity at the ECM, but I'm going to find out what that serial data wake up signal is. So I got the 
Labs go connected to serial data at pin, I guess that's pin one. I can't see this stupid number. Yeah, pin one of the DLC. There's a couple other patterns here. And we got a nice serial data waveform focus. It looks reasonably good. What's this one here? That must be interior can or something. So, yeah, it's, which is pin. Yeah, 11, 12, 13, 12 and 13. Okay, like I said, I'm going to look up what that serial data wake up signal is to the PCM. So here's what I've confirmed so far. This is powered, this is powered, this is powered if the relay is turned on. These four grounds on connector 2 are good, this ground on connector 3 is good. I found a case on Identifix that suggests you're supposed to have 12 volts on that pin 28, I think it is, or 26, pin 26. So we're going to check for that and see if we have that. It uh, calls that circuit a serial data wake up. 26, or maybe it's 28. No, that's connector X2. This connector, this schematic here. Come on, pages are stuck together. 26, accessory wake up serial data. Violet and yellow. But on Identifix, the case suggests that that's supposed to be 12 volts with the key on. So we're going to have a look at it with the lab scope. So that's pin 26 of connector 2. And it shows 12 volts on that pin with the key on. Well, there's no activity on that pin. I'm going to look at that schematic a little further, a little bit more detail, and see exactly where that comes from. Because... All these tests indicate that the ECM has failed, and that's not common for ECMs to fail just out of the blue like that. It's usually a wiring issue, in my opinion. Well, according to my research, this serial data wake-up ignition voltage circuit comes from the BCM. It originates in the BCM, and GM says to test it with a conventional test light. So with the key on, it lights a conventional test light. So we've confirmed all the circuits into the BC into this ECM and theoretically that means the ECM has failed. Very unusual but certainly possible. I know this is tuned so hmm not that that has anything to do with it but Let's see this connector unplugged here. That looks like EGR, I think, I'm not sure. So I reconfirmed all of the power wires going into connector 1 with the load pro. And I get a maximum of 0.1 volt drop when I put the load on it, which is about a half an amp, 500 milliamps. And now I'm on the control wire for the relay here. And if I load test that, you can hear the power relay turn on. If I put a switch in here and turn it on, then I have power to pin 73 at this X1, and it passes the load test as well. So I'm going to recheck the grounds one more time just before we condemn this ECM. So I reconfirmed all the grounds on connector 2 and the ground on pin 73 at connector 3. Got the load pro connected, and you can see the reading on the load pro. It's negative because the polarity is reversed. It goes from 12.74 and then when I load it, it drops to 12.68. So the grounds test good. That serial data wake up voltage is there. So we're going to order an ECM for this thing.